everyone, and welcome to AngelMD's syndicate presentation for WinPact. This will be AngelMD's second syndicate for WinPact following a successful raise during the first quarter of 2017. On the webinar with us today are two of our syndicate leaders, Dr. John Spires, principal in the Spires Group, which is a health and biotech law firm, and a retired cardiac surgeon, as well as Dr. Dana Myers, a general surgeon, an entrepreneur, and a medical business consultant. And also we have Max Moyer, Chief Operating Officer for WinPact. Additionally, there are two other syndicate leads involved with this investment, and they are Dr. Brian Parsley, an orthopedic surgeon in Houston, Texas, and Dan Parsley of AngelMD. WinPact, a safety technology company, leverages its crash cloud padding technology to improve performance in helmets and protective gear by retrofitting their padding system within pre-existing helmet shells. The applications span across all sports and into many other industries as well. I will now let Dr. Spires and Dr. Myers tell you how they became involved with WinPact. Thank you, John. This is John Spires. I am a, um, as he said, a, a strange mix of things, a surgeon, an attorney, and an entrepreneur. We became involved with WinPact because in life certain ideas come along that are so straightforward and so simple and elegant that you just scratch your head and ask, why hasn't someone thought of doing this before? This was our reaction to WinPact. The device is elegant and simple and applicable in so many areas. You can use this, we, we hear so much about helmets and people think, oh, are you a helmet manufacturer? No. Uh, is this something that's, that you can use in other applications? Absolutely. This is an impact protection system. That's what makes it unique. They're not bound to any one industry and it's applicable everywhere makes it very, very attractive to us. Yes, hi, uh, this is Dana Myers. And one of the things uh, when we met this company approximately a year ago that really struck a chord with me is that both as a trauma surgeon who's seen multiple car accidents and problems with head injuries due to those kinds of um, situations, it's an obvious uh, win for everyone in the sense that it is not a lot of additional cost to protect people using this impact crash system um, and also in the arena, arena of having children um, who play these sports and have outdoor activities who wouldn't want a safer environment for both our children as well as uh, those of us who are doing outdoor adventure sports. Um, the other really interesting thing as John mentioned about this market is it is such a wide available market. There are many applications from helmets to protective gear to uh, field advantages as far as playing sports to add this protective technology that um, they have many avenues of potential revenue that they're, that they're already working on. So I think it's a broad based thing. They liken themselves to the next Vortex and I don't know about you but there are a lot of things that I own that have a lot of Vortex and I cannot imagine an art world today that we want, wouldn't want to cut down on the risks of concussions or head injury or chest injury or any of those things. Um, we want to just build a safer environment. And that, that, just to jump back in, that fact that this can be used in so many different industries. This is not a helmet company. They don't make helmets. They make an impact protection system that's applicable in cars that can be used with the military, that can be used with law enforcement or our fire department. Uh, it, it, it's applicable across the spectrum. In the sports niche, uh, it protects our most valuable assets, which are our brains. And so it's, it's a fabulous product and I think it's got a bright future. Terrific. Well Thank you for that introduction, John, uh, and John and Dana as well. Uh, this is Max Moyer, the CEO of Wimpact, and I will go ahead and kick off the presentation. We'll move briskly through these uh, slides, give you an overview of the business, a lot of the heavy lifting, which uh, John and Dan have already taken on, so appreciate that. Uh, and then at the end, we'll conclude with, with questions. So who are we? Wimpact is aim to be the most advanced impact protection company in the world. As you've heard, we consider ourselves to be on a 
market path that would make us the Gore-Tex of impact protection, meaning we don't make a full system, we're not building a helmet brand, but rather we're building an impact liner system that can be used in helmets and protective gear and elsewhere. We partner with large host brands to replace their padding systems with our technology. Our technology we call the Crash Cloud. It is an impact system that uses restricted airflow and padding to provide a wide range of protection against different impacts. So in person you may squeeze the, the Crash Cloud and, and notice it's soft when you squeeze it, but uh, putting it on the table and punching it, the system stiffens up, and that demonstrates how it uses both the restricted airflow and the foam to intelligently adjust to the level of impact. Now, one key aspect of our technology is its tunability. So we use off-the-shelf foams and uh, skin materials to create our systems, and because of that, we have flexibility to adjust what goes in it and what goes around it and how the air moves to address a number of different applications. And that can be a, a light and soft padding for a toddler helmet up to a very stiff and rigid pad for an automobile crash application and everything in between. And that's one of the key differentiators uh, of our technology. In addition to the patented padding system we have, which we think is tremendous technology, is our process. So. Uh, when you look at the sporting goods industry, there's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of outdated techniques. We, on the other hand, are borrowing from the aerospace and automotive fields, advanced engineering techniques to develop our products in a smart and efficient way, uh, such as finite element analysis and simulation we're putting in place uh, to validate our results and, and prototype and iterate in a smart and effective way. And in the future, we plan to plug this system into uh, medical models and with medical partnerships to have a full understanding of how to improve products in a way that goes beyond just a drop rig in a sports lab, but is actually developing as we understand what's happening inside the head, on the brain, or in the body. So does it work? The technology works uh, very well. We validate our technology using the industry standards and applicable certifications for whatever uh, area we are testing in. Uh, you'll see here some of the validation, the results we've gotten in, in using technology in different areas. I'll highlight a couple. The football helmet is one where our, our standard procedure is to take a product, uh, remove the padding or, or some of the padding and replace it with our technology and then test to the standard. In football, that's the Virginia Tech um, helmet testing lab, which has become sort of the gold standard for rotational impact and linear impact, both of which contribute to concussion traumatic brain injury. And there we demonstrated a 30% improvement in rotational, reducing rotational impact force, which, which is a, a big step forward in football. Uh, baseball, the same thing, testing to the baseball standard, we demonstrated 84% improvement in a baseball batter helmet and as much as 95% in critical hit locations. Similar story in cycling where in a full face downhill mountain bike helmet, we improved impact performance on multiple hits from 30% on the first impact all the way up to 76% on a third impact. Uh, and, and as John mentioned, this isn't just a sports and recreation application. We have validated in military uh, helmet padding protection where we show 40% improvement and also in automotive where we've demonstrated 42% improvement in uh, headliner impact tests. In terms of how we get to market and how we work with customers, we describe it as a hybrid approach. Uh, we identify and, and partner with strong host brands and they work together with them, whether it's a helmet or a piece of protective equipment uh, or other impact protection to design both the needs and location and appearance of, of our system, then we go to the WinPAC partner uh, manufacturing facilities to produce our products and deliver them to the host brand. Now on delivery, that's where our economic chain ends. And so in, in that respect, we are like a component provider, a buckle or a snap 
Uh, we're not waiting for helmets to sell off the shelves. We're not taking a royalty. Uh, but it's a hybrid because we're also then co-branding and working side by side with those retailers to tell the, the wind pack inside story, if you will, on the shelves and to their consumers. And that's where we co-brand and, and do some level of co-marketing with these large brands and, and leverage their sales distribution and, and marketing power to get our brand out there. Uh, and that's an important piece of our story and one that resonates well with our customers. They're all looking for new and innovative ways to improve their products and, and uh, help protect heads and, and bodies. In terms of competitive solutions, typically when we show up to a customer, what we are competing against is commodity materials. So EPS or EPP foam is the hard styrofoam type material you might find in a, a bike helmet in, in your garage. Uh, closed cell or open cell foams are, are also typical in, in helmets and, and protective gear. And each of these has, has its pluses and minuses. Typically they're, they're designed and optimized for a single type of impact and lack the tunability and impact performance that we get with a wind pack system. There's some direct competitors as well that are taking an ingredient brand approach. Uh, the feedback from the customers we work with is that none of these is able to match our technology in terms of either the, the variability and tunability or even just on a performance by performance basis. Uh, and each has their pluses and minuses, but not as compelling of a solution for the customers we've been talking to. And then there are indirect competitors that are developing new and interesting ways to build helmets from the ground up. Uh, and now these aren't our direct competitors and, and pretty much anybody who makes a helmet could conceivably be a customer uh, at some point for Winpack. But today we're targeting the large market leader host brands and anyone who competes with, with those customers of ours uh, for the time being are indirect competitors and uh, hopefully in the future are customers. In terms of the opportunity analysis as we see it, uh, there are immediate client opportunities we have in front of us that represent uh, about $11 million in the short term over 2018, 2019 and uh, over $40 million for a fully integrated opportunity once we become embedded with these brands. And, and these are all brands we've started working with and, and have some level of cooperation or agreement in place. But in terms of the bigger picture opportunity, uh, the sports and recreation market, we estimate between 500 million and a billion dollar addressable market for us. And that's wearable equipment such as helmets and protective gear, but there are a number of other applications in this space, such as mats, goalposts, protective walls, uh, anywhere impact protection is needed where we potentially could have uh, an opportunity. Automotive is much larger as is military. Automotive in the domestic market addressable for us, we estimate to be 1.7 billion uh, and 7 billion internationally. And, and we've made st strides in automotive to, to demonstrate our uh, initial, an, initial uh, application of our technology. And we view that at, as larger than just cars, transportation uh, includes all-terrain vehicles. We're, we started initial conversation with NASCAR and Formula One, Formula Two vehicles. Uh, on the military front, domestic and international military application from, again, protective gear, soldier protection to military, uh, even airdrop and, and other, other impact protection needs uh, where, where WIMPAC could, uh, could be effective as well. We've made great strides so far. Uh, initial patent was issued uh, in 2014. Since then, we have uh, put our first helmet on the market, and this is a, a partner helmet, the Hummingbird Women's Lacrosse Helmet came out on the market early this year and has been doing well in, in, on shelves and in stores in this emerging market. This is a, a, a standard that they could not pass without our technology. So we, we literally gave life to that business. Uh, and then there are a number of other significant clients that we have signed or in different stages of working together with from uh, Under Armour All-Star and, and Catcher Helmets. We have a, a close hockey partner that we are working to release a helmet early Q1 or Q2 of next year. Uh, Everlast in the boxing front as well as uh, General Motors. In the military side, the U.S. Army we're working closely for non-dilutive research funding from the U.S. Army for the Advanced Combat Helmet. And actually just today we'll be submitting another proposal for Coast Guard helmet protection. Uh, we've also been 
the recipient of three awards this year, two from the NFL, one at the Super Bowl startup competition in Houston uh, last year where we beat out uh, a couple hundred companies to be named a winner in the protecting the athlete category. And then more recently, the NFL Head Health Tech 2 Challenge where we received $150,000 from the NFL to with the, the direct mission of commercializing our technology in a helmet for the NFL, and that is in partnership with Riddell. Uh, and then in October, we won NFL Players Association backed uh, summit, uh, sports tech challenge uh, leader summit in, in London as well. And most recently, we signed a partnership agreement with Rawlings for the NFL, or excuse me, the Major League Baseball um, Pro Helmet as well as the NCAA Helmet. We're excited about that development uh, and expect the Houston based folks on the phone uh, with their recent success to be as well. Uh, look forward to the upcoming World Series where every baseball uh, player is wearing a Winpacks enabled helmet. Talk quickly about our team. We've got a great slate of advisors that really provide uh, tremendous strategic and uh, and pertinent experience in input to us from Keith Wendell, the former CEO and president of Harley Davidson, to Dr. Russ Lonzer, who was the chair of the NFL Head, Neck, and Spine Committee, uh, on the marketing side, Peter Horst, who is CMO of the Hershey Company and, and Capital One with the What's in Your Wallet campaign, gives us direction on marketing. Uh, we have a Gore Tex executive, a top researcher, and a number of others that provide a strong foundation for. Uh, for our, our team here. To our team, we're, we're a small uh, and growing team. Our CEO, Sean Springs, who is a 13-year NFL veteran and Pro Bowl cornerback, and whose vision uh, as a founder started this company and, and, and leads our efforts. He's been working hard to put the right people around him. And long-term vision is to scale this group up and add needed resources to address the opportunities we have in front of us. So today already with a, a small team, we've done a lot. We've got some great engineers and, and designers, business development folks on, on staff, uh, and, and we look forward to, to growing this team. Today we have seven full-time employees and about as many part-time uh, consultants or employees on staff. In terms of how we execute on the operational plan and, and how we're going to build the team and scale the business, we look at the product development picture uh, as follows. So <clears throat> a product development team consists of an engineer, a designer, and a product manager. And each of those individual teams is supported by shared services, such as uh, engineering, testing, and, and otherwise marketing. Uh, manufacturing support, and then there's a, a further layer of administrative overhead. But each of these product teams can execute approximately 10 projects at a time, and those projects turn over in about six months, depending on the project. So in terms of how we grow and scale the business and what we're looking to do at this next stage is grow the product team. So this is a, a, a snapshot over the next 18 months of how we plan to scale up to from one to two product teams in the near the near term, and, and that allows us to go from uh, 10 projects to 20 projects of throughput. Uh, and, and you'll see there's uh, over the the following uh, each of these is is a uh, half of a year. Over the following uh, five quarter or five halves rather, you see the progression from the project teams as we scale up from one uh, all the way up to five in 2021. And similarly, you see a, a, a steady progression of the projects that these, that these teams can throughput uh, from 10 today up to 50 in, in the future. Now, the, the piece that is not linear in, in the same way is, is the revenue uh, we can produce with these project teams. It's because we're able to capitalize on the, uh, on the projects that are completed from the year before, which tend to have a two to five year run rate right before they need to be redesigned and redeveloped and, and onboard new new projects as well. In terms of who those clients are, we talked about this a little bit. Uh, this is a snap of the, of the clients we're working with at the stage we are uh, from the solving stage where we're still working to solve the problem all the way up to the POs and revenue stage. Uh, the important takeaway from this 
slide is to see how over the next 18 months we're taking steps to move each of these clients from uh, early stage MOU or development agreement in some cases to, to revenue. We're also targeting additional brands and opportunities that are uh, we know we can execute on with a, a larger team. Operational plan, we're raising uh, $5 million in the sale of preferred stock and that is to, to again to scale up the teams to execute on, on the projects according to our plan. Uh, the bulk of that money, the use of funds, goes to building the project teams, building the development teams, and to those personnel are engineering, design, sales, and marketing, uh, in addition to equipment, uh, directed marketing and marketing for growing our brand, and, and uh, overhead needed to, to support that. As far as financial projections, uh, we're on, on target to hit our modest revenue projections for this year. And, and starting in 2018, as we begin to both capitalize on existing initiatives that are in place and, and bring on new ones, we continue to scale uh, scale quickly. We, we see the transportation sector taking a little while to, uh, to come into, into the picture. But, uh, we know just based on the volumes and the opportunity there can be a, a large contributor moving forward as as will sports and rec continue to be and um, in the military in the future as well. Here's a quick uh, quick concept for a batter helmet uh, and use it to illustrate a question on, on pricing. So Winpact is a premium brand and we present ourselves as such to, to our customers. Um, the question as to what, what it means to put Winpact in a helmet or, or in a, a piece of equipment, what it does to pricing, it really depends on the application. So in a football helmet, we believe we can outfit a, a football helmet with a win, full Winpact system without adding any to, uh, to the cost of the helmet on the shelf. Uh, in a batter helmet such as this one, a much lower price point, we had to think about how we can provide a cost-effective solution that still adds a premium technology inside a batter helmet. In this case, we located our technology within the existing uh, padding system. And this is actually the same or similar layout to the helmet that provided the 80 to 95 percent improvement uh, in impact. So it is a way for us to provide a good, better, best model. Uh, depending on the price point, we also can use different skins and different finishes for the pad. Sometimes we use a liner system. There's a lot of flexibility in terms of how we present to customers and drive value for uh, the end consumers as well. That's Winpact, and we are working to grow the most advanced impact protection company in the world. Thanks so much. Thank you, Max. I appreciate it. Now we're going to go ahead and uh get into some questions here. Uh, I should also note, note that if anyone watching this uh, has any other questions, either about Winpact or about the syndicate investment in general, please feel, to, feel free to email them to me at my email, which is right there on the screen, or via the contact us option on the syndicate landing page. And I'll make sure they get relayed on to either the syndicate leaders or to Max and Sean over at Winpact. Um, first question I got here, Max. Can you please address the exit pathways from, for Winpact and, and what do you think the key milestones are as far as getting there? Sure. So uh, we view the exit paths as, as coming in a number of stages. Uh, the core focus for us is to build a great business uh, and a great technology. Uh, but we believe that will translate into opportunity for exit at a number of different stages. So where we are now with a primary focus in sports and recreation in the near term uh, we we believe as we as we continue to grow both um, the brand and the exposure as well as uh, the customer list and the revenue that we'll be an attractive target for a larger sporting company, uh, sporting brand, or as mo many of these are owned by private equity firms uh, or, or conglomerates, one of the one of those brands behind the sporting good companies. As we continue to grow and scale. Uh, into different markets, we become an interesting uh, platform company for a more financial minded buyer, private equity perhaps. Uh, and then as we get even larger, 
uh, a company like 3M could be a prime acquirer for uh, for a technology that has wide application in, in a variety of industries. Uh, there's also the opportunity of a structured exit where uh, we exit the different segments to interested parties in, in uh, you know, one that may want to own or have exclusive rights to the technology uh, in one of the sports and rec, transportation, military, healthcare, one of the different verticals. Uh, so there are a number of different paths, and I think the key milestones for us are both getting the exposure by something like being the exclusive uh, padding system in, in the Major League Baseball helmets is so important, or in the NFL. So weight raising our visibility, I think, drives that process as well as uh, just building a great brand and, and accumulating some of these marquee customers as, as the customer base. Thank you. And as far as I know you touched on the way it's a premium product within certainly the, the baseball helmets, is it something where it, the Winpack technology will be in helmets up and down the product line or is it just staying in the higher end models? So we are not starting at the bottom end of the products uh, with some of our, our large customers that have full product lines they support the vision of, of starting at the high end and, and the Major League Baseball is a great example. Starting in the Major League and Minor League Baseball helmets and then trickling down uh, to the lower priced helmets. And for us it's a uh, if and when we get into a T-ball helmet is really going to be based on the progression of the brand and, and it's a strategic decision at that point whether for that specific opportunity we feel like it will be um, it will be diluting the brand. At some point, like a Bose speaker system, it ends up in a Honda because they have they have built out the chain and the brand enough that doesn't do harm to the brand. Um, but initially, we'll, we'll be only in the premium products uh, or, or the higher price products. So football, for instance, they don't have a, a premium and, and a discount helmet. Um, similarly, GM is, is it's a, a slightly different business model um, in that it's not as as consumer consumer centric. So eventually, we'd like to spread the technology. Okay. Can you touch on the manufacturing hurdles you're going to face? What your current relationships are, and how you plan on meeting what will be a quickly escalating demand for your product? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have strong manufacturing partners. Uh, both overseas and domestic. We have three factories we work with overseas, um, and one of the three is a family of, of factories uh, that is, well, all three are well acquainted with high volumes, but, but one of the three specifically um, does huge volumes, and, and really any of the three could handle and scale up to the uh, the full production for any one of these applications. Uh, similarly, the domestic, uh, the domestic manufacturing partner we have is a great source for military pads um, or, or products, and, and they have a number of plants both in the U.S. as well as one in Mexico. So, with that network of of partner manufacturers, there is always work to do to build those relationships and keep those uh, partners close, but we're not concerned about them being able to meet the demand. Thank you. Dr. Spires, do you have any questions to add? Actually, I think what Max is stressing is important, but I, I want to cover one, one thing from my view. The ability of this uh, product to be instilled in other products at varying consumer levels, varying markets, is makes it very attractive. It is usable not only to professional athletes, but to infantrymen in the military. It's usable in automobiles, and it's useful in Little League football and baseball helmets. So it, it can fit everywhere. I think the, what attracts me is that it can be transported anywhere and it offers an enhanced level of performance as i understand it and i hope max can elaborate on this some by targeting the high-end market first we're trying to create 
a certain amount of market buzz about the product because let's face it, we're all impressionable and, and we look to see what our heroes are wearing. And from there, we can see it transported rapidly to other levels of the market. Is that, is that what you're planning, Max? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's right. And there are two things where we are busy building here. One is the technology story, the performance story, uh, but, but the second is, is the brand story as well. Uh, and again, this is taking a page out of uh, a Gore-Tex playbook or there are a number of other good examples as well. Uh, but as we build both of those, both of those um, core elements of our business, you, you get um, pull from the technology and from the brand. So when Gore-Tex Gore became known for waterproofing, then it immediately spoke to a consumer shopping for a glove or a jacket. In the same way, we want the parent to be looking on that lacrosse helmet, on the, um, the equestrian helmet, on, <clears throat> on the catcher, catcher gear uh, chest pad for the Windpack emblem, uh, uh, understanding that, that that stands for better protection. Uh, and again, I, I and Sean, our, our founder, certainly believes that the, the, the future long-term path is for that to be wide, widely available. Uh, and again, on the brand side, it's just a symbol. Um, it's a, a careful balancing act early while we're building the brand that, that it have the right, um, the right connotations and, and that it be presented the right way with the high-end performance, uh, uh, maximum protective products. And, and it's always easier to go downstream once you're up rather than go upstream once you're down. So that's, that's exactly right. Perfect. Thank you, Max. Uh, and if we don't have any other questions at this time, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and close out for the day. I should also note, if you're not already registered as a member on Angel MD, it's free to join. It takes about five minutes to sign up. To register, please go to www.angelmd.co slash register to join. The minimum investment for the syndicate is $10,000, and to invest, you must be an accredited investor. We do have the ability to accept investment from self-directed retirement accounts. And if you'd like more information on those, please feel free to reach out to me and I can get you more on that. Thank you so much for your time today and we look forward to having you invest with us at AngelMD.